Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to part four of our video guide to Drakenheim, where we're going to discuss exploring the ruins and running adventure sites, the bread and butter of a Drakenheim campaign. Every time that your player characters venture into the ruins of Drakenheim, heading to their adventure site or their next quest, they're going to have to navigate the ruins, deal with wandering groups of monsters, and get to their destination safely, dealing with the haze, contamination, delirium, and everything else that the horrible city entails. So planning their route and preparing for adventure is very important. But what does it look like when they're actually exploring the ruins? Chapter 5 of the book lays out everything that you need to know for running exploration in the Draconine campaign. This is a section of the book that you're really going to want to familiarize yourself with because it's going to come up time and time again every time your player characters go into the ruins of Draconheim and when they have to get back out of there again. And this is one of the very first things that you want to keep in mind as part of the themes of Draconheim. The presence of the haze means that the player characters cannot take a long rest in the city. Every expedition must thus be planned carefully because the player characters risk random encounters on their way into an adventure site as well as their way out. This means that players have to carefully gauge their resources as they explore the city and the adventure sites that they visit. Now your player characters may have been hanging out in the town of Emberwood Village seeing the city from a distance. And although it can be ominous and scary and pretty hazy even from a distance, describing the look and feel and the atmosphere and their surroundings as they enter the ruined city of Drakenheim is very important. Making sure to describe what the haze feels like, what it's like to approach this misty, dangerous city, the wandering monsters, the shadows lurking around corners, the eyes constantly watching them. Make sure to instill a little bit of dread into your player characters. When your player characters approach the ruins of Drakenheim for the first time, take your time with the description. You may want to use the artwork that is on the front of the Dungeon Master screen, that beautiful two-page spread that shows the entirety of the city of Drakenheim in its full glory. And that's a very important piece of artwork, and the description is equally important, because it's our way of capturing that feeling that inspired us when we were playing games like Breath of the Wild, where Castle Hyrule lurks in the distant horizon, visible from every point on the map. Well, as you describe the city of Drakenheim, you really want to highlight to your player characters how the city walls rise up over the ruins and from there comes Castle Draken on the high clifftop, the impossibly tall Academy Tower, the rising dome of the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio, and even the looming clock tower. These landmarks are important things to highlight right away as your player characters come into Drakenheim because these tall buildings are really challenges. They say to the player characters, I'm here, come explore me, if you dare. And that description of Drakenheim as a tantalizing yet horrifying challenge is really the feeling you want to instill in your player characters as they enter the city for the first time. When we were writing the Dungeons of Drakenheim campaign, I was playing a lot of Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and Bloodborne, and even now, Currently, I'm playing Elden Ring. Something that is amazing about those games is the distant sight that you get of a looming cathedral or tower or large building off in the distance that you are starting to head towards. And at least for me in those games, I know that that building is somewhere I can get to, but getting to it is a whole nother story because I know that I have to navigate through a whole city of horrible monsters that are probably going to kill me a hundred times. And that's something that I really was hoping to capture in the city of Drakenheim. So if you are a fan of those types of games or even The Legend of Zelda, those looming obstacles off in the distance, they show the player characters somewhere that they can get to, mm. that is a goal that they can achieve. But the city around that area is just as dangerous and getting there is going to be a challenge for them. One of the other big inspirations for Drakenheim was Fallout New Vegas. And in that game, the Vegas Strip lights up every night. Much in the same way that the haze lights up with a billowing aurora of octarine light every night. These visual touchstones really highlight to the player characters what the big goals of the campaign are. And ask them, explore. 
So let's talk about how to run that exploration. Now, there's several different options for how your characters might approach the city for the first time. We've purposely made it so that at the beginning of the campaign, they're likely going to be sticking to the outskirts of the city. They aren't going to be venturing further in until a little bit later. This is another one of those mechanics that we borrowed from some of our favorite games. Drakenheim is secretly divided into several different sub-regions, the Outer City, the Inner City, and then the big adventure sites like Castle Draken and the Crater. There's the city walls, of course, that are one of the first big barriers of the campaign, but then there is the Haze itself and the Deep Haze. One of the big themes of the campaign is that the player characters have to find ways to get over the city walls, to survive in the Deep Haze, to survive in the Crater, to get into Castle Draken. These are barriers to those big goals that draw them in from the very start. Your player characters might get ambitious and they might go for the city walls or Castle Draken right from the beginning, but these obstacles should push back against them when they try. At low levels, the outer city is going to be the safest place for them, and if they try to approach one of the gates or find means to get under or over the walls, they're going to run into encounters that are a little too dangerous for them. And if your player characters are running into encounters that are too dangerous for them, this should be something that you addressed in session zero, but make sure to describe and reiterate the dangers of the monsters in Drakenheim. Climbing the city walls is a terrifying thing, and even the rival adventurers in Amberwood Village may have told them so. Trying to go under the walls is just as dangerous. The city gates might offer them some ways into the city, but several are occupied by monsters, and several others are occupied by factions that they will have to negotiate with and be introduced to in order to get into the city. So for our first foray into the city, we're probably just looking for delirium or going to one of the adventure sites in the outskirts. Along the way, we might run into some wandering monsters, which is a pretty typical thing in the city of Drakenheim. Our random encounters are divided into different sections for the city. We have random encounters for the outer city, random encounters for the inner city, and maybe even random encounters for the sewers specifically and some other locations. So you're gonna look at your random encounters for the outer city and something that Monty and I like to do is Although you can roll if you prefer that method, we like to pick a few based on where our player characters are venturing to and tuck them aside. If they're going to the rat's nest, for example, it might be cool to pick out one or two of the rat-themed options, or you can always grab some delirium drags or knolls to help showcase the other dangers of the city. The exploration mechanics for moving through the city streets have been made lightweight intentionally so that there's not a lot that you have to manage during play. You can basically just bust out a ruler, measure on the city map, and use it in mostly abstract terms. Player characters don't need to make any navigation checks, they don't need to roll to see if they get lost, because all that's baked into the extremely slow travel times and the random encounters themselves. A lot of people ask, why are the, why are the travel times so slow in Drakenheim? And it's because we've intentionally set this up to be a rather abstract thing. So you don't have to track exactly which streets your players are going on. A general direction of travel is fine. And we assume that the player characters are going through whatever way reflects the method of travel that they want to choose. Your player characters have three options when they are moving through the city streets. They can move quickly, they can move normally, or they can move quietly. If they move fast, well, they risk more random encounters and might be less prepared for those encounters, but it's really helpful later in the campaign when time is of the essence. If your player characters move slowly, they can use stealth, and so they can hide from threats as they explore the city. If they move at a normal pace, because they aren't focused on either speed or trying to keep themselves hidden, they can be sentinels and look out and we give them advantage on perception and investigation checks when they're looking around. The pace that they choose and the length of time it takes to get to their destination is meant to sort of showcase the fact that there are ruined buildings, there's rubble on the roads, wandering packs of monsters that maybe they're avoiding. The mist and haze can get a little confusing so that it is possible that they get turned around a couple times. 
Use this as an opportunity to really showcase the environment, describe it, explain getting turned around or weaving through back alleys or avoiding the monsters if they're moving silently. They see groups of dead husks wandering the street and they take certain paths to avoid them, which does take longer. Monty and I actually did a really fun experiment when we were designing this where we drew a line from where I live to where Monty lives. And that line said that it would actually only take us about 10 minutes to get to uh, each other's place. But in reality, because we're in a city, it takes us about 40 minutes to get to yeah. each other's place. So we wanted to showcase that in your movement through Drakenheim. For all intents and purposes, you're drawing a straight line to their destination, maybe to a gate and then into the city at later times. But the slow pace is meant to show that there is weaving and maneuvering through the city streets. As your player characters explore, description is everything, though. And we've created a couple tables in the book, such as the warped ruins and the city locations, that you can use as inspirational hooks to help you describe the environment as they move through the city streets. It's really important to build this atmosphere, especially the first time your player characters are exploring the city. When it comes to the random encounters, if you've watched our show, you may notice us rolling a lot of D6s. This is one option, and you'll see in the book we say a D20. The way that this system works is that each hour of exploration, the player characters are all going to roll a die. On a roll of one, this means that a random encounter happens. On a roll of the, whatever the highest number on the dice is, they might gain an extra treasure or benefit. Uh, which is also listed in the encounters. If you get multiple high rolls or multiple ones, you may want to make things better or worse. If you get a mix of ones and the highest roll, then they're probably going to end up in a random encounter, but maybe those monsters are guarding something useful. Regardless, with the die that you choose, you might want to start with a d20, but if your player characters are really gung-ho to get into some combat encounters and really see what the city feels like, you can lower that die based on the taste of your group or based on the size of your party. A larger party might want to use a larger die as there's more chance of a number showing up. Whereas in our live stream, we only have three players and we like the random encounters, so we roll a d6. More of a chance of a one, more of a chance of a six, but it's more exciting for us. So pick the die that's going to be best for your group. For frame of reference, when you're if you've got a party of four player characters and they're each rolling a d20, the odds of at least one of them rolling a one are less are about fifteen percent. Whereas for us, with a party of three rolling a d6, the odds of rolling a one are about forty five percent. So it really is a big change in the odds to go from the d20 to the d6. So think about that carefully before you do. That said, if you do want to simplify the exploration mechanics even further, if you've got a group that really doesn't jive with the random encounters, an easy way to handle it is instead of checking every hour, have the player characters each roll a d6 once on their way to, to the city, once again, if they move between locations in the city, and once on their way out, rather than working out exactly how many times they roll. This method is really good to use as well at later stages of the campaign, particularly as the campaign gets more fast-paced and it becomes more about the adventure sites. You may want to opt for the simplified just check once on the way in, check once on the way out method instead of going into the details. That's just an optional way of running it if you have a different preference. Also, as a DM, you may want to use your discretion on when random encounters aren't needed. As the story progresses and they find adventure sites, maybe conquer those adventure sites, occupy them with the faction that they've allied with, or various other options, it may be easier for them to move through the city. If they've already figured out what to do at one of the gates into Drakenheim, they probably have that place down. They don't need to roll a random encounter maybe to get there because the path from the outskirts to that gate are secured by the faction that they're working with. This is something that you can explore as you continue the campaign. 
Making clear pathways of safe passage into areas of the city is a great achievement for the player characters and allows them to venture further into more dangerous areas. That said, during your player characters' adventures in Drakenheim, there may come a time when they overextend themselves. They're low on hit points, they've run out of spell slots, and they need to get out of the city. And then they roll up a difficult random encounter. The first time this happens to your player characters, you should be merciful. The second time that this happens to your player characters, be merciless. It is possible for a Drakenheim campaign to end with a total party kill on a random encounter because your player characters burn themselves out. That's Drakenheim, baby. Also, if you read through our random encounters, you're going to notice that a lot of the prominent villainous monsters can show up in random encounters. We want these NPCs to be creatures that are roaming the streets. They're scavenging. They're fighting amongst each other. So it's very possible that they run into the Lord of the Feast at level 3. They should know that it's probably a better idea to run. And you should really use your descriptions to describe how terrifying these monsters are. A lot of the random encounters are just that. They are random, and the player characters might end up in places they don't want to be, facing monsters that they don't want to face. And retreat is always a valid option. Also, as the campaign progresses, your player characters may gain new abilities and new spells that will help them explore the city. Spell spells like flight and teleportation or even using creative combinations of spells like Invisibility and Pass Without Trace may allow them to move much faster through the city ruins. You could, e you might even have your player characters do what Kelly does often in Drakenheim and polymorph themselves into giant eagles and fly across the city and then get attacked by harpies and get attacked by gargoyles and get attacked by bronze dragons. There's all sorts of things in here that can make these easy buttons sounding solutions a little bit more difficult than the player characters were anticipating. And remember, the haze does prevent player characters from teleporting into and out of the city, although they can still use spells like Dimension Door within the city limits. Finally, as your characters are exploring Drakenheim, they may want to look for things, whether that's adventure sites or rumored locations or delirium itself. Maybe they're collecting delirium just to sell it to get their hands on a nice magic item that Eldor the Immense is selling. Searching the ruins, again, uses some really straightforward rules. Basically, it's a modified skill challenge where every player character makes a check and the number of successes amongst the entire group determine whether or not the player characters find what they were looking for. When it comes to using Delirium, it actually is a degrees of success, so the number of successful checks the party as a whole makes determines how much Delirium they happen to find in the ruins, if they find any at all. You can always be adaptable and creative with the skills. There are certain skills that we talk about in the book, but if your player characters have an interesting way to use their character's abilities or a skill that they are proficient in that makes sense for helping them find delirium, feel free to use that skill as well. We like to be pretty open-ended with this, and letting a player character explore what their character's good at is always a great way to get them excited about role-playing. So be open to how your player characters are exploring the city. And also remember that if they're looking for adventure sites, they don't necessarily need to make skill checks to find those locations. A lot of the adventure sites are pretty obvious once you get close enough. What might be hard is if they do get turned around in Drakenheim and they do get lost by one of the random encounters, they might need to make some skill checks to find out where they're going. But again, be open with that, use your discretion, and have fun with it. Yeah, there's really only two particular moments in the campaign where the player characters have to find a specific location in the ruins. This is when they're looking for the Eldritch Lilies in Queen's Park Garden, and when they're looking for the heart of the crater in the crater itself. Once again, we use the similar mechanics of the skill challenge of searching the ruins to handle this. So if you do want to make it harder, you can bring these skill checks in. But again, assess with your group during session zero whether this is something that you want to go ahead with. Oftentimes, if you, if you do have an exploration heavy group that loves these kind of skill checks and loves this kind of gameplay, do it. But for our groups, we like to keep it simple because we like to get to the action. So it isn't really necessary to have a skill check to make sure, did they get lost? Because we actually have random encounters that 
do cause the party to get lost. So that's kind of where we baked it into the system overall. So remember, be open-ended with all of this. Maybe you have a few random encounters that you've tucked aside and you're just ready to throw out if they roll a one. Regardless of your methods, the book should give you all the details you need to navigate the city, explore the ruins, find your adventure sites, find delirium, and fight horrible monsters. Make sure to cater and adjust this to your group and make sure that it's fun for everybody at the table. We hope that these pointers make it a little easier for you to run and we hope that you're excited to dive into the horrible ruins of Drakenheim and see what's in store for your group. Of course, as your player characters do explore the city, eventually they are going to stumble upon one of those great adventure sites. And so in our next video guide, we're going to talk about how to break down the adventure sites in the book and run them at the table. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in, in the, the Dungeons, Dungeons of Drakenheim.